Well, I hope you enjoyed that little trailer of this of this video of this Lagium and Habitat build. That's right, the Tropical Pack has been released and the first habitat I'm creating is for the Lagibbon. We're started with this structure, which was a bit of a pain in the ass to build, as you can see me building it now. I wanted everything to line up before I did the rotational trick, so I'd have everything, what would you call this kind of structure? Kind of like an Avery style building, isn't it? And this will form the one of the indoor parts for the Lagibbon. This habitat, I am really happy how it came out looking. Remember, if you do want it, the Steam Workshop link will be in the description below so you can have it in your own zoos. But yeah, I'm really happy how it came out looking. Oh, and by the way, I've got a new mic. I've just bought the El Agato Wave 3. Um, so let me know how the sound sounds. Let me know if it sounds good. Is it, any, is it an improvement? Is it worse? I'm still playing about with some of the filters and some of the settings to try to get it sounding it the best it can do. See, I've created two parts to this now, and I'm just duplicating them over, and rotating them around until I've got this Avery style circular building, and then I needed to dig out the terrain. I wanted like, uh, kind of like a river, what would wrap around, or not just a river, just like a body of water, what would wrap around this, which would act as a natural barrier, so our Lycubans cannot escape. And this does work, and it does work with any monkey, well, any ape, primal primal animal what can climb if you wrap just a, a normal natural pool of water around the habitat because they can't swim they will not escape and it looks good as well so i am naming this habitat the light given land hope you like the name obviously not a lot of thought has gone into the name but yeah i'm, I'm really happy how it comes out looking we do end up adding water, of course, and we'll add the tropical water, which you will see later on. And we will wrap a path around, but this is how it came out looking when the terrain work was done. With the water added and the path added, this is how it came out looking. Add a bit of foliage. This is kind of like the start of the foliage, um, the main bulk of the foliage, should I say. All tropical, as you can see. So let's finish, finish off um, this foliage work here and this rock work. <laughs> Again, I've added loads of different foliage types and loads of different rock types. Try to keep it the tropical look because it is the tropical pack and it's kind of environment the Lagibbon will um, naturally live in as well. So that's the kind of theme I wanted to go with. Now, tropical pack, talk to me. Are you excited about this tropical pack? Have you got it? Are you thinking about getting it? Is that why you're watching the video? Or do you just want to see the Lagibbons in action? Let me know. As you can see, I put a lot of work into this foliage and adding different foliage types and using some of the new foliage, which you can see me doing now. Um, very time consuming, and it is with most of my creations. The building work is normally okay. It's the foliage and rock work what takes the most time, especially when you're adding different kinds of foliage types like this to try to give it a unique look and make everything not look the same, basically. I'm gonna skip forward just a sec so you can see how the foliage work came out looking in the end because like i just said it took me a long time and i'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch a three hour long video of me placing foliage and this is how it came out looking you can see all the rock works in and all the foliage is in as well so now we need to build a climbing frame for our lovely la gibbon so i started off with this simple climbing frame here this is part of the pre-built climbing frames what come with the game i've actually not created this surprise surprise i then needed to climbing frame to be extended so i had to actually create my own needed to be extended into the gap into the hole of that structure what we created at the start so foliage work is in the water is in everything the rock work is in and we've got the structure what we created at the start now to create a bridge what leads into that gap so our lovely lie gibbons can climb up and into there as well this gives our guests kind of like a closer look at these gibbons because they can get closer to the structure because the animals cannot escape and yet that is correct the animals cannot escape this habitat we do have to make some changes towards the end to prevent them escaping so keep tuned for that we do add detail to this climbing structure as well i didn't want it as a simple little climbing structure see me just placing the main tree what will go in the center of, of that structure there but yeah the climbing frame i wanted to add a bit of rope add a bit of detailing and just make it not look like every other climbing frame what is already pre-built for you i've already got those pre-built ones at the start of the climbing frame structure where the tree is so i wanted to make it a little bit more unique and give it my own little touch and i think i pulled it off i think i managed to do it Go down to the comment section below now and tell me what is the first, well, if you are getting the tropical pack, what is the first habitat you are going to create for what animal? 
I'm really interested to, to know which animals you're most looking forward to building for. And I think my next video or my next creation just might be the sloths because I absolutely love sloths. I think they're funny, I think they're cute. They're just, they're just everything sloths, aren't they, really? And this is the rope I'm talking about now and the little detailing. And these are the details what really matter when creating stuff in Planet Zoo. I say it all the time, just focus on the detailing and everything else will just stand out. Foliage, rock work, detailing, them are the three main things what will make any habitat stand out. I'll bring you back when the detailing is complete and I'll show you the fence, that you know, the external fence, what's going to stop our guest jumping over into this habitat. I'll bring you back when I'm creating that. It's a very simple but very effective habitat fence. So let's create that fence and I did it by using some of the new pieces in the tropical pack, obviously. These lovely new painted, that kind of like rustic style poles, um, Indonesian style poles, I love them. And then this is actually a door handle which I turned into a fence. And then custom walls, obviously it won't be my kind of creation without at least something a little bit high detailed and that is the custom wall where I started creating this. You can see I've just used the conservation um, wood pieces and I've just lined them up and that will make the main structure. You see me just topping it off with more conservation pieces here. This is in real time as well just so you can get a grasp of what I'm actually creating. At the bottom I've got plaster pieces lined up what make it look like brickwork. Just adding the trim on the top of here now and you can imagine how time consuming this was also but it does look good you have to admit. So let's get creating this and finishing it off and then get it lined up. We select all and duplicate it over, but then we needed to create the inside of this because from the outside it looks good, but from the inside it doesn't. And we just simply do that by adding a plaster piece, an off-the-grid plaster piece, and then I can simply duplicate it over and get the structure what we want, which you can see me doing now after I've just adjusted some of the items. I realised I needed to adjust the height of at least one of the walls to give little different um, height def definitions so it just doesn't look all the same. So that's what I did. I just carried on with the same kind of structure. And there we go. Bob Shunkle, Fanny Jivan, as we say in the in the UK. And then we can just duplicate that over, move it over, line it up. And this will act as the main hard shelter for our animals, as well as where our um, workers, our zookeepers will be able to go in drop off and be able to come in and feed the animals in the feeding stations and the enrichment items um so i needed quite a big structure because i wanted facilities in there as well i wanted a little keeper's hut so everything is all in one so if you do want to download this off the steam workshop you shouldn't have to worry about placing facilities everything should be okay to go apart from power and this is how we came out looking in the end you see i've left the roofs off very important so you can build the inside first before you put the roofs on but yeah this is the main structure now complete i added a plaster roof just giving it that clean simple modern um style to it and i think modern and tropical really do work together we've got two separate parts we've got an indoor part which is going to act as a hard shelter away from our guest for our animals and then the left hand side that you can see there is where our um where our facilities are and where our habitat gate is be in where the animals can get in by and where our our staff can go in as well to feed the animals so yeah let's redesign this part and then get the roofs on and get everything finished off and looking well first thing i need to do was create the indoor area where you know our like gibbons can go and relax they're still going to have climbing frames in the and it's kind of going to be like an um, out of the way play area slash sleeping area for the like gibbons just giving it them more enrichment and more privacy if they need to. Again, just adding to the realism effect. You don't need to do this in Planet Zoo, but it's something what I love doing. Just adding those little bit of detailing, what you would see in real life, making it look more realistic and pleasing, more pleasing to the eye, eye mainly. Um, adding a little door now so it gives the impression that our zookeepers can go through that door if they need to, to check on our La Gibbons. Just adding a little trim on these metal fences. And obviously we saw we've got the the door where our zookeepers can go in and we've got like a latch slide down door where our lager bins can go in as well obviously this is not functional like i've just explained it is just for looks adding the bedding in this which is functional <laughs> the animals will sleep in that bedding so that is going to be the designated areas where animals sleep and then it was all about just filling in the gaps 
so I needed a fence at the front which again will give it the impression that the fence can be locked off to the Ligermans. They can be let out or let in when needed and our vets can get to them if they are in trouble basically. This again is something what you would see in a real life zoo and I did play about with a couple of ideas. You can see that I've just added a little bridge as well and I thought right they're going to escape and this is what I was on about earlier. I was thinking they can easily escape, they can climb up those rocks, they can climb onto the main structure. This is going to be a nice but it does all work and it does come out looking good while working um just playing about with ideas for this fence here as you can see and i'll go with like this separate like poppy out bit so it looks like our lagomans can just literally crawl through there and it is traversable all this is traversable and they cannot escape i'm so happy you don't understand the stress i had trying to think about ways to stop these escaping but it just kind of worked in my favour and just everything worked out in the end. You can see me just adding the fake door again to give the impression that our zookeepers can go through this door. Um, they can actually just walk through the fence, I believe, and get to the enrichment items by that bridge access. Again, the lag gibbons can use that bridge as well to gain access to the main um, land. And we're nearly done now. All left to do is finish off this front area and then jump onto the roofs, get the roofs back on and add a little bit more detailing. So yeah. That's pretty much done. Um, I will jump to you now in real time to show you how everything came out looking in the end. And that's it. The habitat is complete and the light gibbons are in as well. And two things, they like it in there, they've got everything they need. And most importantly, they can't actually escape. Let me show you how I changed that because originally they could. Not gonna lie, I had a bit of a pain trying to get these to not escape, but I just put these fences up. I just created these custom fences. You've probably seen them in many of my videos. I do have them on my Steam Workshop if you wish to download them and have them in your own zoos to stop your gibbons getting out. I put two there, and then on the other side, I've put two there. And I finished off the building. I just put the roofs on, had a little bit of detail in like this. It looks like it protects the window. And then if we go inside, we can see we've added a little bit of a compartment area for the lag gibbons, just a chill out zone, what's inside, what can be separated from the outside. And at the staff area here, I've just added some of the basic props you would see in a staff area. Nothing too overcomplicated, nothing too detailed. I really wanted the viewing area of this habitat to be the most detailed part. If you did like this video and you like this habitat, then hit that like button. If you're new around here, feel free to subscribe if you're into Planet Zoo stuff. My name's Adam, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will catch you in the next Planet Zoo video.